In this lesson, we are going to discuss double angle identities. Let us first recall our sum and difference identities for sine. Sine alpha plus beta is equal to the following. Now, if we set alpha and beta to be equal to theta, meaning to say they are just the same, this will now become sine theta plus theta is sine theta cosine theta plus cosine theta sine of theta. This is sine of 2 theta. These are just the same, sine theta, cosine theta. So this is 2 sine theta, cosine theta. And we have our first double angle identity for sine. What is this saying? Sine of double an angle is equal to 2 times sine of the original angle times cosine of the original angle. Let us now find a counterpart of this one for cosine. Let us recall our sum identity for cosine. Just like what we did earlier, we take alpha and beta to be the same angle theta. So this becomes cosine theta, cosine theta minus sine theta, sine theta. On your left hand side, this is cosine of 2 theta. This is cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. What if we want to just express it in terms of cosine? If we want to express this in terms of cosine, we will write sine squared theta as 1 minus cosine squared theta. That is from our Pythagorean identity. And this becomes 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. Or we can also express this in terms of sine squared theta only. So in that case, we write cosine squared theta as 1 minus sine squared theta and then copy minus sine squared theta. So it's equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Here are the three formulas and they are all equivalent to cosine of 2 theta. Let us have some examples. Cosine of 140 is equal to what? Let me just write again our formula. Notice the angle here. From here to here, from 2 theta, it became theta. So what happened? It was divided by 2. So therefore, from 140, if you want to express it using this formula, this will become 70. Next for number 2, we have this one. Let me just write again our formula for the double measure identity involving sine squared. We want to go from here to here. And if you look at these angles here, from theta, it became 2 theta here. So it got multiplied by 2. So therefore here, we have 2 pi over 7 times 2. So this is 4 pi over 7. Next, suppose that sine theta is negative 3 fourths, cosine theta is positive, and we want to find the exact values of the following. For number 1, we want sine 2 theta. From our formula, sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta. We already have a value for sine theta that's negative 3 fourths. We just have to get the value of cosine theta. And how do we do that? We use the techniques that we employed in our previous video lecture, wherein we have to get our x, y, r. First, we have to determine the quadrant of theta. Since we have that sine theta is negative and cosine of theta is positive, that means that theta is in quadrant 4. Sine theta is negative, the y coordinate is negative, and cosine x coordinate is positive. 
and we're now ready to get our x, y, and r. Sine theta is y over r. Since we are in quadrant 4, x is positive, y is negative. y is negative 3, r is 4, and what will now be x? Have x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. x squared plus 9 is equal to 16, which means that x squared is 7. However, we will get the positive square root of 7 because x is in quadrant 4. So that's why it's really very important that you have to get first the quadrant. And therefore now, we can plug in our values. This is 2 sine of theta that's already given to be negative 3 fourths. Cosine theta is x over r. So that's square root of 7 over 4. Therefore, this is negative 3 square root of 7 over 8. Next, for the second one, we want to evaluate cosine of 2 theta. Well, you have three formulas to choose from. However, I will just use the one which involves sine. That is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. It's just direct substitution. 1 minus 2 sine of theta, which is negative 3 fourths squared. So that's 1 minus 2 times 9 over 16. That's negative 2 over 16 or negative 1 8. Next, let us express cosine 6x in terms of cosine 3x. Take note that you want to go from 6x to 3x. Let us first write our double measure identity here. Cosine 2 theta is 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. Notice that I use the formula which involves cosine only. So take note that from here, 2 theta, it will become theta. Therefore, the angle here gets divided by 2. Hence, if I write here cosine of 6x, this is equal to 2 cosine squared of 6x will become 3x minus 1. And this is exactly what we want. We were able to write cosine 6x in terms of cosine 3x only. Next, let us prove 1 plus sine 2 theta is equal to this one. If you look at your left hand side going to the right hand side, this one involves 2 theta. But this one involves theta only. So therefore, we are going to use the double measure identity to express 2 theta in terms of theta. So let's start with the left hand side. We express sine 2 theta as 2 sine theta cosine theta. Let me just write this as the left hand side. Now let us look at the right hand side. I want to show that this is equal to this. Let us just expand sine theta plus cosine theta squared. So that's sine squared theta plus 2 sine theta cosine theta plus cosine squared theta. However, if we put this together, sine squared theta and cosine squared theta, this is now equal to your 1 plus... 2 sine theta cosine theta and this is exactly what you want so for your formal proof you start with the right hand side you ended up with 1 plus 2 sine theta cosine theta and then you just work your way backwards you now write this as 1 plus 2 sine theta cosine theta is sine 2 theta and that is your left hand side we are now ready to get the double angle formula for tangent. We first recall the formula for tangent alpha plus beta. If we let alpha and beta to be the same angle again, theta. This is now tangent of theta plus tangent of theta 
all over 1 minus tangent of theta. Tangent of theta. Simplifying, the left-hand side is tangent of 2 theta is equal to tangent theta plus tangent theta is 2 tangent theta all over 1 minus tangent squared theta. And that is our identity. So for example, we're given that tangent theta is negative 3 fourths, secant theta is less than 0, find tangent 2 theta. Since we're looking for tangent of 2 theta, let's just use the formula. This is 2 tangent theta all over 1 minus tangent squared theta. Since we are given the value of tangent theta, this is just a matter of plugging in the values. The numerator is negative 3 over 2. The denominator is 1 minus 9 over 16. Therefore, this is negative 24 over 7. For our last example in this lesson, let us prove the following. So, for this one, I will start with the left-hand side and express it in terms of theta only using our double measure identity. Notice where you want to go. You want to have two only in your numerator. However, if you look at your numerator here, you have two tangent of theta, but you already have your two here. So that means that I want to remove this tangent of theta. So how will I do that? I will divide both sides by tangent of theta. So now we have 2 for our numerator and for our denominator, look at this. We have 1 over tangent theta, that is your cotangent theta, minus tangent squared theta over tangent theta is tangent theta, which is exactly your right-hand side. In our next video lesson, we will discuss half-measure identities.